اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان والسماء رفعها ووضع الميزان ألا تدغوا في الميزان واقيموا الوزن بالقسط ولا تخسروا الميزان والأرض وضعها للأنام فيها فاكهة والنخل ذات الأكمام والحب ذو العصف والريهان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان خلق الإنسان من سلسال قلفخار وخلق الجان من مارج من نار فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان رب المشرقين ورب المغربين فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان مرج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يخرج منهما اللؤلؤ والمرجان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان وله الجوار المنشآت في البحر كالأعلام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يسأله من في السماوات والأرض كل يوم هو في شأن فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان سنفرغ لكم أيها الثقلان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يا معشر الجن والإنس إن استطعتم أن تنفذوا من أقطار السماوات والأرض من أقطار السماوات والأرض فانفذوا لا تنفذون إلا بسلطان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يرسل عليكم شواذ من نار ونحاس فلا تنتصران فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فإذا انشقت السماء فكانت وردة كالدهان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فيومئذ لا يسأل عن ذنبه إنس ولا جان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان 
يعرف المجرمون بسيماهم فيؤخذ بالنواسي والأقدام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان هذه جهنم التي يكذب بها المجرمون يطوفون بينها وبين حميم آن فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان ولمن خاف مقام ربه جنتان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان زواتا أفنان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فيهما عينان تجريان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فيهما من كل فاكهة زوجان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان متكين على فرش بطائنها من استبرك وجن الجنتين دان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فيهن قاصرات الطرف لم يتمسحن إنس قبلهم ولا جان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان كأنهن الياقوت والمرجان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان هل جزاء الإحسان إلا الإحسان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان ومن دونهما جنتان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان مدهامتان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فيهما عينان الضاختان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فيهما فاكهة والنخل والرمان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فيهن خيرات حسان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان هرم مقصورات في الخيام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان لم يتمسحن إنس قبلهم ولا جان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان متكئين على رفرف خزر وابقري حسان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان تبارك اسم ربك ذي الجلال والإكرام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان فاطمه الزهراء عليه السلام بنت رسول الله انها قالت دخل علي ابي رسول الله في بعض الايام فقال السلام عليك يا فاطمه فقلت عليك السلام قال اني اجد في بدني زوفا فقلت له اعوذ بالله يا ابت من الزوف فقال يا فاطمه اتني بالقصا اليماني فغتني به فاتيت بالقصا اليماني فغتيته به وسرت انظر اليه واذا وجهه يطلو كانه البدر في ليله تمامه وكماله فما كانت الى ساعه واذا بولد الحسن قد اقبل وقال السلام عليك يا امه فقلت عليك السلام يا كرتين وثمرت فؤادي فقال يا امه اني اشم عندك رائحه طيبه كانها رائحه جد رسول الله فقلت نعم ان جدك تحت الكساء فاقبل الحسن نحو الكساء وقال السلام عليك يا جد يا رسول الله تاذن لي ان ادخل معك تحت الكساء فقال وليك السلام يا ولدي ويا صاحب هودي قد ازنت لك فدخل معه تحت الكساء فما كانت الا ساعه ويد بولد الحسين قد اقبل وقال السلام عليك يا امه فقلت وليك السلام يا ولدي ويا كرتين وثمرت فؤادي فقال لي يا امه اني اشم عندك رائحه طيبه كانها رائحه جد رسول الله فقلت نعم ان جدك وخاك تحت الكساء فدان الحسين نحو الكساء وقال السلام عليك يا جد السلام عليك يا من اختار الله اتاذن لي ان اكون معكم تحت الكساء فقال وليك السلام يا ولدي ويا شافي امتي قد ازنت لك فدخل معهما تحت الكساء فاقبل ان ذلك ابو الحسن علي بن ابي طالب وقال السلام عليك يا بنت رسول الله فقلت وليك السلام يا ابو الحسن ويا امير المؤمنين فقال يا فاطمه اني اشم عندك رائحه طيبه كانها رائحه اخي وابن امي رسول الله فقلت نعم ها هو ما ولديك تحت الكساء فاقبل علي نحو الكساء وقال السلام عليك يا رسول الله اتاذن لي ان اكون معكم تحت الكساء فقال وليك السلام يا اخي ويا وسي وخليفتي وصاحب لواي قد ازنت لك فدخل علي تحت الكساء ثم اتيت نحو الكساء وقلت السلام عليك يا ابتا يا رسول الله اتاذن لي ان اكون معكم تحت الكساء فقال وليك السلام يا بنتي ويا بذاتي قد ازنت لك فدخلت تحت الكساء فلما اكتملنا جميعا تحت الكساء اخذ ابي رسول الله بطرف الكساء وما بيده اليمنى الى السماء وقال اللهم ان هؤلاء اهل بيتي وخاصتي وحامتي لحمهم لحمي 
ودموهم دمي يؤلمني ما يؤلمهم ويحزنني ما يحزنهم أنا حرب لمن حاربهم وسلم لمن سالمهم ودون لمن عداهم ومحب لمن أحبهم إنهم مني وأنا منهم فجأ الصلواتك وبركاتك ورحمتك وغفرانك ورضوانك علي وعليه وأذهب أنهم الرجس وتهرهم تطهيرا فقال الله عز وجل يا ملائكتي ويا سكان السماوات إني ما خلقت سماء مبنية ولا عرضا مدهية ولا قمرا منيرا ولا شمسا مضيا ولا فلك يدور ولا بحر يجري ولا فلك يسري إلا في محبة حاولاء الخمسة الذين هم تحت الكيسائي فقال الأمين جبرائيل يا ربي ومن تحت الكيسائي فقال عز وجل لهم أهل بيت النبوة ومادن الرسالة هم فاطمة وعبوها وبعلوها وبنوها اللهم صل على فقال جبرائيل يا ربي أتاذن لي أن أحبط إلى الأرض ليكون معهم سادسا فقال الله نعم قد أزنت لك فحبت الأمين جبرائيل وقال السلام عليك يا رسول الله الألي الأعلى يقرأك السلام ويخصك به التهية والإكرام ويقول لك وعزة وجلال إني ما خلقت سماء مبنية ولا عرضا مدهية ولا قمرا منيرا ولا شمسا مضيا ولا فلك يدور ولا بحر يجري ولا فلك يسري إلا لأجلكم ومحبتكم وقد أذن لي أن أدخل معكم فهل تأذن لي يا رسول الله فقال رسول الله وليك السلام يا مين وحي الله إنه نعم قد أذنت لك فدخل جبريل معنا تحت الكساي فقال لي أبي إن الله قد أوهى إليكم يقول إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرس أهل البيت ويتهركم تطهيرا اللهم صل عليه فقال علي لأبي يا رسول الله أخبرني ما لجلوسنا هذا تحت الكساء من الفضل إن الله فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وآله والذي بعثني بالحق نبيا واستفاني بالرسالة نجية ما ذكر خبرنا هذا في محفل من محافل أحل الأرض وفيه جم من شيتنا ومهبنا إلا ونزلت عليهم الرحمة وحفت بهم الملائكة واستغفرت لهم إلى أن يتفرقوا فقال علي عليه السلام إذا والله فزنا وفاز شيتنا ورب الكابة فقال أبي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله يا علي والذي بعثني بالحق نبيا واستفاني بالرسالة نجيا ما ذكر خبرنا هذا في محفل من محافل أحل الأرض وفيه جم من شيتنا ومهبنا وفيه مهموم إلا وفرج الله حما ولا مغموم إلا وكشف الله غما ولا طالب حاجة إلا وقضى الله حاجة فقال لنا لي السلام إذا والله فزنا وسويدنا وكذلك شيتنا فازوا وسويدوا في الدنيا والآخرة ورب الكابة اللهم صل على محمد سورة المباركة الفاتحة
صلوات اللہ محمد و آل محمد علی کے چاہنے والے کشیے سے مناتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے کشیے سے مناتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے کشیے سے مناتے ہیں لگاتے ہیں دری نارے لگاتے ہیں دری نارے جو چہرے موس کو راتے ہیں یا علی علی کے چاہنے والے کشیے سے مناتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے کشیے سے مناتے ہیں ہماری بندگی مولا ہماری زندگی مولا نبی نے کہہ دیا مولا جسے بس ہے وہی مولا سکایا مانے اپنی لوریوں میں یا علی مولا غدیر کم کا قصہ غدیر کم کا قصہ اپنے بچوں کو سناتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے کشیے سے مناتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے کلا کرتا ہے حج کے درمیاں خوشیوں کا دروازہ تواف ایسا ہے ہوتا جومتا ہے کانا کعبہ دلوں میں عظمت توحید لب پر یا علی مولا خدا کے گھر علی پیدا ہوئے سب کو بتاتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے کشیے سے مناتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے کشیے سے مناتے ہیں جو کہلاتا ہے مومن کربلا کا ہے وہ باشندہ مظالم کے مقابل خون سے رہتا ہے پائندہ علی پر جان دے کر یہ ہمیشہ ہو گئے زندہ شہیدوں کے تو چہرے بھی شہیدوں کے تو چہرے بھی کفن میں مسکراتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے خوشی سے مناتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے خوشی سے مناتے ہیں کوئی بوڑھا بھی آ جائے تو وہ ہو کر جوا اٹھے دلوں سے نارے ہے در زمیتا آسما اٹھے میرے ہر شیر پر دل سے منافق کی دعا اٹھے جو منکر ہے علی کے ان کو لفظوں سے جلاتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے خوشیے سے مناتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے خوشیے سے مناتے ہیں نارے حیدری یا علی 
مسلسل کوششوں کی بات بھی ناکام تالش کر علم جس کو پیمبر سے ملا وہ مرد ہے حیدر موالی سب کٹے ہو گئے ہے سج گیا خیبر جو سچی بات ہوتی ہے جو سچی بات ہوتی ہے وہی سب کو بتاتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے کشیے سے مناتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے کشیے سے مناتے ہیں بلایا تا شب میراج جس کو حق نے اپنا تا بہت نزدیک تا محبوب بس کہنے کو پرداتا خدا نے بات کی جس میں بہت مانوس لہ جاتا بہت کش ہے نبی میں راج سے تشریف لاتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے کشیے سے مناتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے کشیے سے مناتے ہیں یہی رکھتے ہیں روز رات دن ہے یہ دعا کرتے فریضہ خم سے کا ہر طور سے ہے یہ ادا کرتے علی والے نہیں ہرگز نمازوں کو قضا کرتے نمازوں میں خدا کے سامنے سر کو جھکاتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے کشیے سے مناتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے کشیے سے مناتے ہیں لگاتے ہیں دری نارے جو چہرے موس کراتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے کشیے سے مناتے ہیں علی کے چاہنے والے کشیے سے مناتے ہیں بر محمد و آل محمد صلی اللہ اللہم صلی علی محمد و آل محمد یا علی Sheikh Musa al-Khaliq, respected elders, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So if Fatah is requested for the Salah Sawab or Marhumin listed on the screen and for all Marhumin, Al-Fatiha. I am an Ujibu is requested for the names listed on the screen and for all those in need here and elsewhere. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amma yujibu al-Musarri da da'ahu wa yikshifu su'a. Amma yujibu al-Musarri da da'ahu wa yikshifu su'a. أما يجيب المستر إذا دعاه ويكشف سوء أما يجيب المستر إذا دعاه ويكشف سوء أما يجيب المستر إذا دعاه ويكشف سوء
The celebration of the Wiladat of our first Imam, Imam Ali alayhi salam, will take place on Wednesday, February 24th at 7.30 p.m. Sayyid Shabir Kamani will be speaking on the immense legacy of Imam Ali, justice, harmony, and peace, the universal, the universal beacon of hope for humanity in the 21st century. The commemoration of the wafat of Sayyid Zainab salam is on, will be on February 26th, which is a Friday at 7.30 p.m. By, and Sayyid Shabir Kamani will be speaking on the topic of the journey of courage, the legacy of Sayyid Zainab, bravery, honor, and resilience. Ladies program. There will also be a celebration of the Wiladat of, of Imam Ali alayhi salam on Thursday, February 25th at 3 p.m. for the ladies here at the masjid. Sister Tahira Khaliq will be giving the lecture. Food drive. The outreach team is embarking on a new initiative beginning with the Wiladat of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Whenever there is niya served at the masjid for Rajab and Sha'aban, we will be collecting donations to sponsor food at a local shelter. We request $5 per person, however, any amount is welcomed. Donations can be made via PayPal or the website as shown on the screen. Khums Ijaza. We continue to have official authorization to collect Khums dues to be used fully towards the running and maintenance of Masjid Hay. You may fulfill your obligated religious dues by generously supporting Masjid Hay and continue spreading the blessed benefits to the Orlando community. To remit your Khums towards the upkeep and maintenance of the Masjid, please contact Brother Murtaza Kareem at finance at masjidhay.org or visit the link on the screen. Finally, if you or your child is interested in reciting during programs held here at the Masjid, please reach out to me at 407-619-2021 for the Gents or Sister Jamila Ghulam Hussain at 407-255-5112 for the ladies or sign up using the link on the screen. At this time, I would like to invite Sheikh Mushtaba to come recite tonight's Madras with a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Salawat. الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وأعز المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أب القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين سيما بقية الله روحي وأرواح العالمين له الفداء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة 
وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا قال الله الحكيم في محكم كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وجعلناهم أئمة يهدون بأمرنا وأوحينا إليهم فعل الخيرات وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وكانوا لنا عابدين أمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد يا مؤمنات Brothers and Sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Congratulations on the auspicious occasion of the birth of the ninth Imam of Ahlul Bayt Imam Muhammad At-Taqi Al-Jawad عليه أفضل الصلوات والتحيات اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who sincerely love them and follow them in our life. The discussion that I would like to briefly have inshallah tonight together is regarding the guidance of Ahlul Bayt salawatullah wa salamu alayhim ajma'een and how we can benefit from them and how we can follow them. In actual fact, it is our responsibility as their followers to learn about them and make sure that they are our role models, make sure that they impact our lives to the point that we live our lives by their example. How can we be inspired to live by their example, specifically by the example if, of Imam Al-Jawad alayhi afdalu salawat wa tahiyyat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajil faraj. The ayah that I recited from Surah Al-Anbiya, ayah 73, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says we surely made them leaders, referring to Anbiya of Bani Israel. Nonetheless, often we spoke about the application of the ayat of the Holy Qur'an being beyond their time and beyond the specific example they were revealed about. Ayat of the Holy Qur'an often revealed about specific stories or examples, but they're not limited to those stories or those examples. Rather, those examples help us understand the ayah better. Just like Anbiya of Bani Israel and the previous messenger before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, <laughs> Just like they were guides, the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has continuous guides. And the Ummah of Ahlul Bayt, their status is in fact of a more significant status specifically in the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the role that they play in the Ummah definitely a higher and more significant status than the Anbiya of Bani Israel or previous Anbiya 
I'm not here to discuss the maqam, who is higher, who is of a higher position in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is a different discussion. And inshallah, mu'mineen and mu'minat, we are well aware of the statuses of the imams of Ahlul Bayt in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in terms of application of their leadership and their hidayah, their guidance in the ummah of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, definitely their position is more significant and we can relate more to their positions than the positions of previous messengers. So the ayah very well applies to the Imams of Ahlul Bayt and to the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam to gain guidance through them. وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا they guide with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, they don't have anything of themselves. They don't come up with any commands or any rulings, laws. They don't guide except through the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the religion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala. In this ayah, we clearly understand that the guy, the purpose of the leaders is to guide. وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً We made them leaders. يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا It's to guide. Some of you were with us on Jum'ah. I had a brief discussion on the issue of the imama, the divine leaders, their status, the wasila through them, shafa'a through them, and comparing that or differentiating rather between that and the idolatry and the belief in idols and people seeking certain things from their idols. We made that differentiation, and inshallah, mu'mineen and mu'minat are clear that us going to the Prophet and his progeny, salawatullahi wa alayhim, seeking their intercession and wasila, it is by, by far the opposite. There is no relationship between that and the actions of the idolaters and those who go to anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through them. A big difference, inshallah, mu'mineen and mu'minat are clear on that. Nonetheless, the purpose, the sole purpose is not to gain our needs for one is sick, goes to or seeks wasila of Imam Musa al-Kazim. One is in need of perhaps safety, seeks the wasila of Imam Rida alayhi salam. One in need of any of those things are definitely not the purpose of the leaders. وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ So that you and I are guided Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we made them leaders to guide. And we understand leadership as guidance. A leadership in a journey guides the journey or guides the travelers through the journey. This is the purpose of leadership. That is one. Yahduna bi amrina. With the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, each of, of our Imams had a certain responsibility during his time which ultimately led to a certain style of guidance that may apply to some of us in certain positions in our life, may not apply to us as much. We may, another Imam's life may apply at times rather than a particular imam and I'll explain. The imams of Ahlul Bayt salawatullahu wa salamu alayhim throughout their lives, different imams played a different role based on the circumstances surrounding them. 
we in our lives we go through different circumstances at times we have or some of us may have challenges in terms of oppression a leadership that is oppressive we cannot even share our faith we cannot have majalis you know freely we still have followers of Ahlul Bayt in some states, some cities, some countries that cannot freely gather whatever we're doing here, cannot do it due to the lack of uh, the safety and security in terms of the authorities. They won't allow them. Now, some mu'mineen and mu'minat are doing different styles of programs because of the COVID nowadays. And alhamdulillah, we're still able to gather though with keeping the distance and all the precautions. However, there are different circumstances and throughout the, those circumstances, the believers, the followers of Ahlul Bayt, see guidance through examples of Ahlul Bayt and what they did. In fact, this is exactly what our scholars do and how they behave throughout their lives and how they give their verdicts, our great scholars, they give their verdicts on different circumstances, looking at the life of the Masumin, the Imams, the infallible ones, applying different circumstances that we go through, and basically applying the life of the Masumin to our circumstances. How did they behave, behave and how did they act during those circumstances? Therefore, we, sh we should do the same. The circumstances specifically about Imam al-Jawad alayhi salam and a great lesson that I want us to learn and be inspired by is through his name. What led to the name that he is or the title that he is given he is Imam Muhammad al-Jawad alayhi salam Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad what led to him get, getting that title is what I want to briefly discuss, inshallah. Back to the ayah, before we come to the life of the Imam. Back to the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately after saying, وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا Ayah 73 of Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter 21. He says, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ فَعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ وَإِقَامَ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِيْتَاءَ الزَّكَاةِ We revealed to them that they need to do khayrat and then establishing prayers and then paying the zakat. We know the concept of establishing prayers and paying zakat in the Qur'an coming together. So establishing prayers and paying the zakat, they go hand in hand. We understand that before that something else came in the ayah. And that is my discussion tonight. Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we reveal to them that they need to establish prayers and pay zakat, which we read in other ayat regarding faith. That number one, believe and then establish prayers and pay zakat. In Surah Al-Baqarah, in the beginning of the surah, muttaqeen are described as what? ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ They believe. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ They believe. And then what? وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ They establish prayers and pay. This is muttaqeen. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking of the leaders. Now not average muttaqeen, the pious ones. No, the leaders. And the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that they guide immediately afterwards before even saying that they need to establish prayers and pay the zakat. Before that he says, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ فِعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ We reveal to them to do the good things. Khayrat. Do good. And I'll explain what examples of good before I get to that to the examples let us establish this 
relationship. First, they are leaders. Leaders guide. Now, in order for them to guide, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ فَعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ In order for them to guide, they have to do khayrat. Subhanallah. In other words, you and I, if we want to be guides, we want to be like Ahlul Bayt. They are leaders. They are the guides. We follow them means what? We also guide. We guide our family. We guide our community. The bigger our hearts, the more we contain. If we're big enough, we look at beyond our community. Some of our great scholars, they look at the affairs of the ummah, the world. Where is humanity heading? What should I do for humanity? What should I do for the world of Muslims? What should I do for the world of the followers of Ahlul Bayt? The bigger heart, the hearts, the more significant they are. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says to Kumail, in هَذِهِ الْقُلُوبِ أَوْعِيَةٌ خَيْرُهَا أَوْعَاهَا These hearts are like containers. The best ones are the most containing. The bigger the, the hearts, the more they contain, the better they are. If we are only focused on myself, that's a very little heart, not much value. If the focus is beyond me, me and my family, even better. We go beyond that, me and my family and my community, and we become bigger and bigger, guiding. How do I guide? وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ فَعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ You want to guide, you need to do khayrat. You need to do good deeds. Some of you heard me when I mentioned in Jumu'ah, the importance of feeding the poor and needy and gathering funds for the poor and needy. I also emphasized upon the fact that we shall not undermine the importance of feeding in the name of Ahlul Bayt, in the majalis of Ahlul Bayt, because it is bringing people together in the name of Ahlul Bayt sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it is encouraging, though some of some people they look at it as a relationship of a you know physical relationship. Basically, people because there is food they come. I don't know if you've heard this before. Uh, whenever whenever there's food, more people participate. You must have heard this. And some may look at it in the wrong way. Please look at the positive side. In the name of Ahlul Bayt, people love the food of Ahlul Bayt, therefore, therefore they gather. Use that as an excuse. Use that as an opportunity to gather people in the name of Ahlul Bayt. فَعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ In order to spread the words of Ahlul Bayt. صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهُ وَسَلَامُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَجْمَعِينَ اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد. This is khayrat as we hear it in the life of Ahlul Bayt themselves. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم in the famous hadith, hadith al-Dar, very famous. Many of you are well familiar with it. The name is referring to inviting his the, his family to his house. In there, the first declaration of the Khilafah and the Wilaya and the successorship of Amirul Mu'mineen sallallahu wa sallamu alayhi was declared by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in his house when he invited his family. Very famous. Hadith al-Dar tells us that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam was commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Invite your next of kin, your family, your close family members. So he invited, he told Imam Ali alayhi salam, the narrator is Imam Ali alayhi salam. He says, the Prophet told me that I have been commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jibra'il emphasized that I have no choice. I know that they will ridicule me. I know that they will not accept. I know I will hear from them what I don't like to hear. 
Not that he doesn't like to hear it for himself, against himself, no. It is because he doesn't like to hear from these people, he cares for them. He, ha he, is, com he is a loving, he is a very compassionate person. Therefore, it hurts him to see them struggling because their, their speech and ridiculing of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam translate in their punishment. Therefore, he does not want to hear that. He says, Ya, ya Ali, I have been commanded. I have no choice. I know I will hear ill from them, but I have to invite them. So gather all of them and prepare a meal. It was a miraculous way because the Imam Ali salam, he says more than 40 people came. The Prophet blessed the meat that I made. It wasn't even a lamb, a complete lamb. 40 people and not even a complete lamb. Yet it fed all of them and there was left, still left of it. And they had the water that I gave them and it, no matter how much they would drink, they would, there was still water for them. All of them, they benefited from the food. As soon as the Prophet wanted to speak, Abu Lahab, that Quran describes, Tabbat yada Abi Lahab wa tab. He interrupted, knowing what the Prophet is, is, uh, is about to speak, interrupted and in fact dispersed the gathering. Therefore the, Imam, the Prophet repeated it, Amir al-Mu'mineen cooked the meal again, invited all again. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam invited them. So after the food, he invited them. Is there anything wrong with doing khayrat in order to invite people to the, war, to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Not, not only there is nothing wrong with it, in fact, this is the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa In the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the Holy Quran confirmed that when he wanted to bring the hearts of some of those who were newly Muslims closer to Islam, in other words, make them uh, more affectionate towards the religion, not just a shallow relationship. He gave them extra of the booties when they had some of the booties of the war. He gave some of those people extra. Quran describes them as al muallafati qulubuhum. Some of the muhajireen or some of the companions, they said, Ya Rasulullah, why? Why are you favoring these people? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed ayat of the Holy Quran about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands His Messenger that this is how you treat people in order to bring them closer. It is not bribing people. Let's not misunderstand the two concepts. It is not bribing, rather, it is doing khayrat that softens the hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells His Prophet Musa ala nabina wa alayhi wa alayhi salam, make people love me. He says, how? He says, remind them of all the good things I do for them. People are more likely to become affectionate and participate with emotions, with the faith, when they see goodness from it. Anbiya Allah and awliya Allah, salawatullah wa salamu alayhim ajma'een, they took that, they used that as a methodology of inviting people. They fed in the name of God. They gave other groups of faith, they took, in the name of God, you know, any any time you go to the to a temple, you have to pay. Yeah, these Anbiya Allah, Awliya Allah, the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, people came to them, they gave them. Now we're not here to discuss khums and zakat and how it works. I've discussed them before, and how that works compared to what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has declared that. The prophets do not ask for a reward. This is not a reward they're asking for. This is part of a system. This is part of a government and part of a system. Nonetheless, when you go to Ahlul Bayt, anybody who went to them, they gave generously. Specifically, the Imam were gathered for tonight. Imam Al-Jawad alayhi salam is given the title Al-Jawad, which comes from Jude. Jude comes from giving, being generous. He is given the title because of how he was towards the Shia. First, when he was born, 
His father, Imam Rada alayhi salam, he says, there is no mawlud that has more blessings upon our Shia than this kid. No, bo no, no baby born that has more blessings upon our followers than this kid. Meaning Imam al-Jawad alayhi salam, when he was still young, when he was just born. His birth brought so much happiness and pleasure, confirmed the twelve, ima the twelve verses and the imama because they questioned. Imam Rada alayhi salam did not has did not have uh, boys until much later in his life, and therefore some of those who questioned or were weak in their faith started questioning. You know, if you're the eighth, then where is the ninth? And how is gonna, how is there gonna be the tenth and so on from the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhim ajma'een. The, the Imam says to them, be patient and I will have the, uh, the Imam who is, who is named, who I will name Muhammad and he will have the barakah and the great blessings upon the lovers and the followers of Ahlul Bayt, upon the believers in general. And he will be the one who confirms truth from falsehood. So much the Imam, the Imam Rada alayhi salam says about, about him. One of the letters from Imam Rada alayhi salam to his son, Imam al-Jawad alayhi salam, when he was in Medina. Imam Rada alayhi salam was taken to Khurasan. Imam Jawad alayhi salam was left in Medina. When he was in Medina during that time, though he was a young boy, not even eight, because the, his imama was eight or nine. That is when he was the imam of Ahlul Bayt. How? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding Yahya, وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْحُكْمَ sabiya. We granted him the leadership when he was sabi. Sabi meaning has not reached puberty. Same as Imam Jawad alayhi salam. He did not reach puberty yet. He had the knowledge above the greatest of scholars of his time. Debates are clear. We have so many stories. If you read about even the the uh, the ayah on the Quran about the punishment for the thief and where does the hand get cut off? If you read about it and the Imam his response versus the response of other scholars, you will be amazed by the knowledge of the Imam when he was a young boy at the time he had not reached puberty. And other examples of the knowledge of the Imam sallallahu alaihi ajma'in. The Imams of Ahlul Bayt, their knowledge is not similar to those who go to school, you and I. We have to study and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them the knowledge again because of His knowledge of their purification. The more purified, the more knowledge and the more favoring from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, there's no blood relationship and we, have, we are clear on that. Imam Jawad alayhi salam receives a letter from his father, Imam Rada alayhi salam. A beautiful letter. If you read the words, you will learn. There's so much for us to learn from the Imams of Ahlul Bayt. First of all, our responsibility to our, towards our children. Secondly, the way you address your children. Thirdly, what is a priority to teach your children? He's apart, he's depart, or he is separated from his son. Long distance between them at that time, traveling that journey was a couple of months of a you know, journey. It's, it wasn't a day or two or you know, half a day of traveling or flight. It was, in fact, a long journey. All this time and all this uh, you know, distance between them, the Imam did not ask of his health, phys physical health, did not ask of his, you know, typically what we ask our children, of the different things in terms of the material things that they're living, rather he advises his son, takes the opportunity to advise his son about what? Specifically about giving. He says, Ya Aba Ja'far, first he calls him with his kunya. Aba Ja'far is the kunya of Imam Jawad alayhi salam, although and again, Kunya does not mean that he has to have a son named Jafar. At birth, they give, in fact, it is a recommendation. At birth, they give them the Kunya. So they give them the name and they give them the Kunya. His name was Muhammad and his Kunya was Aba Jafar. Later, he gained the title Al-Jawad because of his Jude and Karam and generosity. He says to him, Ya Aba Jafar, 
بلغني أن الموالي إذا ركبت أخرجوك من الباب الصغير I heard The Imam is following I heard that your companions Those around you When you, when you ride In other words When you go wanting to travel When you want to go anywhere They take you out From the small gate You know there is a you know, The main gate And the small gate They take you out From the small gate Why? The Imam described فَإِنَّمَا ذَلِكَ مِنْ بُخْلٍ مِّنْهُمْ They are being stingy. Why? Because at the main gate, people are used to the generosity of Ahlul Bayt. They are used to Ahlul Bayt being so giving and so generous. Therefore, many of the needy people would gather around the main gate of the Imam صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهُ وَسَلَامُ عَلَيْهِ his companions, because of their stinginess, fear of poverty, which shaitan threatens and warns, as shaitan يَعِدُكُمْ الْفَقْرِ On the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises abundance and forgiveness. مَغْفِرَةً مِنْ هُوَ فَضْلًا Therefore, some of the companions wanted to avoid these people. The imam says to him, لِأَلَّا يَنَانُ مِنْكَ أَحَدٌ خَيْرًا They are worried about the fact that others may receive some good khair. وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ فَعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ These mawali, some of them are worried. They don't want you to give here and there because then they feel like you, you will have less and therefore they will receive less ultimately. However, وَأَسْأَلُكَ بِحَقِّ عَلَيْكِ the Imam says to him, I ask you by my right upon you. The right of father, the right of master, the right of the Imam. I ask you by my right upon you that you give la yakun madkhalaka wa makhrajaka illa min al bab al kabir. You don't enter and exit except from the main door, from the big one. And then he says, فَإِذَا رَكِبْتَ And when you are traveling, فَلْيَكُمْ مَعَكَ ذَهَبٌ وَفِضَّةٌ Make sure you carry gold and silver coins. Why? So that you give. ثُمَّ لَا يَسْأَلُكَ أَحَدٌ شَيْئًا إِلَّا أَعْطَيْتَهُ Make sure anyone who asks you, you give them. Anyone. إِلَّا أَعْطَيْتَهُ Then he says to him, إِنِّي إِنَّمَا أُرِيدُ بِذَلِكَ With that should. Surely I want for you what? Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises you, raises your status. Through giving in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, giving gold and silver and not to be worried. فأنفق, he says, give. وَلَا تَخْشَ مِنْ ذِي الْعَرْشِ اِقْتَارًا don't ever fear that God would, would withhold from you. Iqtar is the opposite of giving. Don't ever think that you give and God is going to withhold from you. Their giving is mostly to guide people. In another hadith, in fact, he, he says to him, this is how people should know you. The Prophet wasallam gave from his wealth and the wealth of Khadija salamullah alayha whose wealth became the means to spread Islam to sustain Islam in the time of boycotting and the time of all the sieges that they were suffering under Quraysh her wealth saved them the Prophet gave the Prophet fed and invited you and I should focus on making sure our wealth is used in the best possible way for the best possible means, which is to guide people to Him. Give to guide. You do that often with your children. With children or grandchildren, you want them to succeed. You want them to be successful at school and other things you want them to be good at. You try and bribe them. Uh, you might use the term bribing, encourage them, positive reinforcement, whatever you want to call it. You do it so that they do the right thing, they do the good things that you want them to do. 
Do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do it to spread the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide people. Be like the imams of Ahlul Bayt. Be like Imam Jawad alayhi salam. That he gave and gained the title in order to what? His goal is not to make people love him for himself. His goal is not to become famous for himself. His goal is what God wants from them. Yahduna bi amrina. Therefore, fa'lul khayrat is for hidayah. We do good to guide. Our goal should be guiding. And any time you do anything, you want to have niyaz, you want to give food, you want to invite people to a gathering, you want to have whatever method you use. In the old days they called it niyaz, today you want to call it, call it barbecue, you want to call it picnic, whatever it is. To invite, invite the youth, do what they like, spend on them, invite them. However, make sure you link it to something that guides them. Make those gatherings fruitful through guiding them. This is what the Prophet ﷺ did. If it wasn't in the first attempt, it was in his second attempt. Invited them and fed them and then invited them towards the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Imams of Ahlul Bayt gave people, invited people, were generous with people to the point that everybody was gathered around them like the, like, like literally, like, they were like the candles and all the butterflies around them. Every, every uh, basically all the community around them coming to, because they expected goodness from them. They knew that these people would give, these people would have goodness in them. Therefore, they became the names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eternalized. Today, centuries passed, yet we gather and remember Al-Imam Al-Jawad alayhi salam. So many people gave here and there. Perhaps in terms of the amount, in terms of the dollar value, maybe some of the people in today, some of the billionaires in today's world, in terms of va value, maybe they gave more. However, whether it was sincere or not, was it a tax deduction or, you know, sincere for God? How much of it in the rate uh, compared to what they have? How much did they give compared to what they have? All of the factors put together made certain names eternalized for their giving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes they, these names shine throughout the centuries. And others with their death, everything about them dies. Maybe, you know, a few years or few, maybe uh, within a few months or a few years and everything is forgot forgotten. The important thing, my dear brothers and sisters, if we are lovers of Imam Jawad alayhi salam, if we are sincerely followers of Ahlul Bayt salawatullah wa salamu alayhim ajma'een, we need to learn from their lifestyle, learn from their names. The name of Imam al-Jawad is the generous one. We need to be generous. Generous to do what? Generous for guidance. Be generous to guiding towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Use your ability to give in order to guide. Make your giving conditional or, you know, maybe sink it with goodness. Even, and I tell people, and I'll finish with this one, even with your children. In today's world, in the consumer society that we're living, unfortunately, we have as a culture of children getting whatever they want for nothing. There's no need for any achievement. They just get whatever they want. And I emphasize and I, and I encourage my brothers and sisters, parents, make sure you reward your children for their achievements, for their goodness, for their good behavior, for their akhlaq, for their ethics, for their morals, for their achievements in terms of learning their religion, learning academically, doing good, therefore you reward them and teach them that reward system which is a godly system. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On this night, in the name of Imam Jawad alayhi salam, 
that he makes us generous. He makes us amongst those who are giving. He makes us amongst those who give to guide, amongst those who give wisely and make it linked to guidance towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who learn from the lives of our ma'asumeen, the infallible ones, and follow them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On this night, all mu'mineen and mu'minat who are unwell asked us for dua that he grants them the quick, quick recovery. And those who passed away from our gatherings from mu'mineen and mu'minat, our dear reciter of Marthia for Ahlul Bayt, departed today, him his, for his soul and the souls of all mu'mineen and mu'minat, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send them his mercy and the rewards of al-Fatiha ma'a salawat ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. قبط کے چاند مصرے شاعر کا نام ہے ہانی ہلوری اور خاص بات اس میں یہ ہے کہ انہوں نے کافی کم سنی میں یہ کلام لکھا تھا جب انہوں نے لکھا تھا ان کی عمر تقریباً دس سے بارہ سال کی ہوگی منقبت تو کافی طویل ہے لیکن صرف دو اشار انشاءاللہ پیش کروں گا برما محمد وعال محمد صلو وعال حمد علی میں دار پہ بھی لفظوں کو روانی دیتے ہیں حمد ہے علی میں دار پہ بھی لفظوں کو روانی دیتے ہیں کٹتی ہے زبان کٹ جائے مگر پیغام زبانی دیتے ہیں شاہد ہے ادائے میسم بھی ہم ہیں وہ علی کے دیوانے شاہد ہے ادائے می سمبھی ہم ہیں وہ علی کے دیوانے جس پیڑ پسولی چڑھنی ہو اس پیڑ کو پانی دیتے ہیں جس پیڑ پسولی چڑھنی ہو اس پیڑ کو پانی دیتے ہیں پیشانی ہر پہ یہ کہہ کے رومال کو باندھا سرور نے پیشانیے ہر پہ یہ کہہ کے رومال کو باندھا سرور نے جنت بھی فدا ہو جائے گی ہم ایسی نشانی دیتے ہیں بر محمد و آل محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم 
مدہت میرے تقی کی مقدر کی بات ہے مدہت میرے تقی کی مقدر کی بات ہے خطرے کے لب پہ آج سمندر کی بات ہے مولا تقی کا ذکر کیا جب تو یوں لگا مولا تقی کا ذکر کیا جب تو یوں لگا یہ ہے نبی کا ذکر یہ ہے در کی بات ہے یہ ہے نبی کا ذکر یہ ہے در کی بات ہے تقوالی کا صبر حسین شہید کا تقوالی کا صبر حسین شہید کا ان کو اگر ملا ہے تو یہ گھر کی بات ہے مدہت میرے تقی کی میری تو پیاس بجھ گئی ان کی سنا کے بعد میری تو پیاس بجھ گئی ان کی سنا کے بعد یہ بھی تو ابن ساقیے کوسر کی بات ہے مدہت میرے تقی کی مقدر کی بات ہے پر محمد وآلہ محمد صلی اللہ اسلام علیکہ یا رسول اللہ اسلام علیکہ یا امیر المؤمنین اسلام علیکہ یا فاطمہ الزہرہ سیدت صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اسلام علیکہ یا خدیجت القبر اسلام علیکہ یا حسین المشتبہ اسلام علیکہ یا بابد اللہ علیہ وسلم واللہ تسید المحسومین من ضروریتک والی ابن الحسین محمد ابن علی و جعفر ابن حمد و موسیٰ ابن جعفر والی ابن موسیٰ محمد ابن علی والی ابن محمد والحسن ابن علی والحجت ابن الحسن عجل اللہ فرجا و سحل اللہ مخرجا و ظہورا السلام علیکم نبی رحمت و رکاتو اللہم کل ولی کل مجد ابن الحسن تواتک علی وعلا عبائی فا 
في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقعدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه وزكاته وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين